Disclaimer, the song in this episode is performed by one character, not two, as it was originally planned. If the voice sounds different at times, it was because I turned to one of the actors to help finish the song or else the song wouldn't be good. The art used was because two characters were going to sing, but it had to be changed to one. So, let's just say that a character featured is being sung about as it would be about them. Anyway, let's get to the episode, shall we? That was the first of the five love stories that had happened. First, we'll go and see what John and Hugo's life was like before they arrived in Coltland. John and Hugo lived in a small house in the countryside of Rangel, Ireland. Their mum had been raising them ever since their stepdad and dad had died. The passage did sadden them but they managed to get over them very quickly. Hey Hugo, you want to go try and find something for mum? Her birthday is today. I'm going off to the forest to find some flowers for her. You can come along if you like. Nah, picking flowers is for fillies. I think I'll go shopping when you get back. Why can't you just come along and we can say it's a present for both of us? Huh? Huh? Alright, I'll be back in a few minutes. Ever since we were foes, we've been very close. Closer than any pony in our town. We're always playing, it's all so fun. Other ponies tried to break us apart But we were inseparable He's always there for me We are brothers always forever Like most siblings we do everything together I taught him some self-defense we never had an argument We were always together We shared our secrets We shared our crashes I would never leave his side I won't We're brothers always forever Like most siblings we do everything together if we were ever apart, I would feel so empty. We're brothers always, forever. 
always, always. Happy birthday, Mum. I got you some flowers in the forest. They reminded me of you. Oh, thanks, Hugo. They're lovely. Just put them in the vase on the table and I'll water them in a little, okay? So, what gift did you get from me, Jordan? I got you a rare plate. It was the cheapest I could get and it reminded me of Dad and Stepdad when they would give you one each time they came back from a trip. Ah, that's so sweet, Jordan. You know I miss him every day. So, huh, it's better than my gift? No, Hugo. I love the ball very much. This is one of the best birthdays I've ever had ever since your dad and stepdad passed away. We still miss them too, but at least we've moved on. I have a bad feeling that each time you get married, they suddenly die as if we have a curse on this house. Is it this house haunted? If we marry, will we get the same thing? Whoa, whoa. Calm down, Hugo. That won't happen to us. But what if it does? What if it's been happening for generations and our ancestors had the same fate? I don't think that it would ha be possible for that to happen like a genetic. Hey, I know more about medicine than you. What we are talking about doesn't involve medicine. We aren't talking about genetic diseases over here. Ugh, don't get me started on them. I know it doesn't. Do you not remember the time that I saved Ophelia's life from death? It just happened out of nowhere, and I healed her without knowing the knowledge of healing. I'm glad she survived, otherwise I wouldn't live with myself. You've told us that story so many times. And I'm still proud of you. Oh, thanks, Mum. Isn't that better than me having a talent for gardening? Well... I think I'm proud of you two on the same level. If I chose one of you better, I would be afraid that you two would hate each other for the rest of your lives. Yeah, that wouldn't be nice. I would hate for somebody to hate me in this family. Now I don't want you two to start fighting over for my affection. You've never done it before. Sure, Mom. We promise. We never fought for Dad's affection before he died. Well, that was fun. Who wants cake? Sure, but first I have to blow out the candles on one of the slices and make a wish. We're so lucky to have Mum to raise us, even though we're all adults now. Yeah, we are. Where do you think we should move to, as we are grown up now? Northern Arabland? Jottingham? Strands? Lustrylvania? Nah, they don't seem to be good places. No offense to them at all. Where could we go to start a new life? Won't Mum be sad? Maybe. But remember, she will always be proud of us. What place should we go to live in? Where do we have other family members from Dad's side of the family? Why Dad's side? Mum never really talked about our family. Oh, I know who else are related to us. Duncan and Cassia? The cousins we haven't seen for more than a decade? But we aren't allowed to see them. I hope this day never ends. I don't want to leave. Well, Cassia, time doesn't stop and it goes fast when you're having fun. That is so true. It would have been nice if we were living together. We would never be separated by that. Cassia, you brighten my day a lot every time I see you. I can't believe this act was so sure you're saying to me! Don't act like you don't know. Your youngest son had stolen my ruby necklace that Duncan had given to me on my birthday. That was the most precious thing he has ever given me. Ah, I didn't do anything of the sort. How dare you accuse my brother? The ruby necklace has been stolen? Can we please have one day without a fight? Cassie, 
This has happened for the fifth and final time. From now on, no more visits ever again. And don't think about coming to Cotland. Ever. <gasps> <gasps> Fine. Have a chill away. Come on, Jordan Hugo. Let's get out of here. That was not a nice thing to say, Mom. I want to keep seeing them. How dare you talk back to me like that, young lady? Ah, uh, Cassia, that... That was not the right thing to say. Well, she deserves it! I can't stand here accusing Hugo all the time. Now we can't see them again. again. Exactly. They live in Cortland. We should go there and live with them. What if Aunt Rosecake sees us and she'll still accuse you of that false crime? We'll just have to stand up to her and tell her to stop accusing any pony of something stupid. I never really liked her. I guess Mum didn't get along with her either. You could see by the way they were looking at each other. So, when do we leave for Cortland? We'll leave in about a few days. Mum will understand. She always does. And always will. I'm going to miss being around her. Such a different time in a young stallion's life. Having to move away from the home you were raised in all your life. <gasps> Mum's coming. Are you two going to sleep yet? Yes, Mum. We're going to now. That is, if we can sleep, we sometimes can't stop talking in the middle of the night. But you're the one always giving me coffee. No wonder I'm always wide awake. Just go to bed so we can start packing for Coatland. <sighs> Fine. Good night. <laughs> I can't believe it! Our boys are growing up! <laughs> hey, Mom. I'm going to miss you. Hugo, get these boxes to the taxi and we'll be on our way to Copeland by ferry. Alright, alright, no need to be pushy. It's not like the end of the world or anything. Remember not to go near Cassia, Duncan, or... Ugh, rose cake. That'd probably make your life worse. You know, Mom, you've told us so many times. Anyway, we're going now. Bye. Duncan! Duncan! Cassia! Cassia. Uh, calm down! Cassia! I'm struggling to hold you down as it is! <laughs> You know that her dogs do that a lot to us. <laughs> all right, all right, Garcia. That's enough hugs now. Come on, little sis. You can't do this all day. I don't want to let go. It's been over a decade since we were not allowed to see each other. Do something, Duncan. I can barely breathe. Yeah, hurry up. Hey, Duncan, Cassia, who's your friend? Daniel, these are my cousins, Hugo and Jordan. They just got here, and should they join the guarding of our town? I don't see why not, since they are family, but Cassia hasn't joined us. I have to stay home because Mom doesn't think it's for me. Also because my special talent is with the cinnamon, and Mom needs me at home to help her bake even though I still hate her. Someday I'll tell her that I want to move out. And she can only be around to visit when it's a special event, such as the gala, or any of our birthdays. But they never last so long if Mum is around. For goodness sake, you're grown up, and she still treats you like a filly. Thank goodness Mum wasn't like that with us. <clears throat> Did you forget that I am here? <laughs> of course not. We're just having such a nice family reunion. <sighs> That reminds me, I need to get home right away now. I don't want Mom to start lecturing me about being out later than usual. 
Bye, you two. I'll see you at the gala, maybe, or when there is a festival, but if one was around, we can't be seen together. Mm. What training do you two have to protect Gordon? Well, I'm experienced with weapons such as sharp ones and distractions. We also just patrol around as well. I've experienced with medicals such as injuries, medicines with ointments and such. Ugh, I'm not too good with surgery. It makes me queasy. Uh... Alright, you two are in. We always needed a doctor around here. We had a few candidates before, but they didn't even know that much about medicine. Or they had painted on their kitty marks to make them look like first aid signs on medicine. I, it was pretty disappointing indeed. Yay! 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 Calm down, you two. You want to get started right away. Sir, we'd love to. Yeah, why not? At least we can check around and see if there's any danger. Hugo, you can go to the clinic to work there, and Jordan, you walk around all the town for any signs of danger. Now, get on with it! Yes, yes sir. sir! So far, so good. No pony has been vandalizing property or even started fights. Ouch, my head! Great, I just dropped the apples my brother needed to make apple tarts for autumn! Are you okay? I didn't see you there as I'm patrolling around here. Oh, you are uh, a new guard around here? I heard about you and that there was a new doctor as well. Oh, that's my brother Hugo. He's the medical one of our family and has been having that talent from when he was 13. Ah, uh, that's nice. I have an older brother named Connor who mostly goes on business. And if I don't have to go with him, I take care of his daughter Autumn. I love her like a daughter instead of a niece. Anyway, I apologize for my anger there. My brother is out on business and Autumn and I were just going to bake some apple tarts for her and for my brother since he comes home tomorrow. My name is Jocelyn. Just before I have to go home, what's your name? My name's Jordan. If you see a light purple mare with dark red hair and dark gold eyes, her name is Cassia. And she's my youngest cousin and the one I'm closer with. Now, I need to go home. I'll see you around. Wait! I'll walk you home. A mare must have an escort. You never know what type of creepers could be around here. Alright, but don't try anything that I won't like or you'll regret it. I promise. Now, let's get you home. I'm Jocelyn! You're finally home! Yes, Adam, I'm home. I also managed to bring enough apples for what we are going to make. Oh, Autumn, this is Jordan. Jordan, this is Autumn, my niece that I told you about. Is he your cult friend? <laughs> of course not, Autumn. If he was, I would tell you just... I just met him today. You're all right. I met you met him a week ago, and you're now pretending that you met him yesterday. So you are not guilty. Now come on, let's start making those apple tarts! She's always like that, asking if I have a court friend or not. Anyway, I'll see you some other time. Wow, I... I... feel... What is this feeling? Hey, Jordan, you took a bit longer than usual. What's up with you? Oh, Duncan. I met the most beautiful mare while I was on patrol. Really? Who is she? Her name is Jocelyn. She lives some distance away from here. She has yellow fur, aqua blue eyes, and cherry red hair that is all tied up. She has a niece named Autumn, and a brother named Connor. She's the sister of somebody who used to work with us. Oh, that stallion always hated us. But I never knew that he had a sister. We did know that he had a daughter, but never her name. He quit a few years ago, and we haven't seen him or heard anything from him since. Is that a bad thing that I'm in love with her? Not really. 
Jocelyn hasn't done anything bad to us, and we haven't really met her, but we've seen her around. I think Cassia knows her from the bakery. I suggest you ask her to the bakery. Have a nice talk, then tell her how you feel. Uh, I would do the same to Romea I love, but she is trapped in another castle by her dad, and she can't go out of there. The only way I can talk to her is to get permission to see her, but I can't take her outside. You're right. I'll go talk to her tomorrow and ask her to the bakery. If only I had it easy to tell her how I feel. John and Jocelyn start to spend more time for a month, and so John wanted to ask her something important. Jocelyn, I have loved you since the day we first met. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Will you marry me? Yes, yes, of course I'll marry you! Where is he? He should have been here right now. Did he just leave me here? Is he even coming? Where is he? If he isn't coming, then you won't have some pony to spend the rest of, the rest of your life with. Daddy can never find some pony else like Mom, and I didn't know her all that well. Jocelyn, thank goodness you're still here. I'm afraid that Jordan won't be coming at all. Why not? He got cold hooves and couldn't go along with the wedding. He just galloped off and I have no idea where he could have gone. Uh, I don't think I was going to get an uncle for once. I'm never going to get married again. If anybody tries to ask me, I'll refuse to say yes. Why did you have to be killed in Pakistan, Daniel? Everything would have still been better if you had survived. I miss him too, Jordan. I may have moved on too soon, but the good thing is, I'm happy again. He'll always look down upon us and see Madeline grow up bigger and bigger. Why did it have to be so soon? You two weren't married for a full year. I wouldn't know, but what we need to do is not think of it too much and be happy. The only thing I'll remember him by is Maddie who looks so much like him, and he was the one that made her. Who is that? Just our old leader. He was taken from us a few months ago. That's so sad, darling. I lost my mum when I was young, and I lost a husband a few months ago, too. But I've moved on and ready to find love again. I won't have my dad tell me what to do as I'm grown up now. I've never seen you around. You new to Coltland? I recently moved here from Madrid a few days ago to start a new life. I had enough of my dad telling me what to do, so I moved here as I heard that everything was beautiful and some nice residents. Why do you not have the accent of your country? I actually don't know. Maybe because I spent so much time with my mum and picked it up from her as she talked the way I do. Well, you sound nice and... Look beautiful. I'll have to go home at some point. I was only invited to this party because it was for all residents, and I accepted so I could make new friends and maybe know more about Coltland. I'll walk you home. That's something I would always do to the mares that talk to me and would be walking home on their own. You... you would? I'm a guard after all, and here to protect the ponies and animals here. Why can't I escort a beautiful mare like you home? Oh, alright. I'm leading the way, sir. Well, this is my home. I'll maybe see you tomorrow. Oh, to hay with this. You want to spend the night? It seems like a long walk back to your home, and I don't want you to get tired. All right, you're right. It is a long way back. That won't be a bother to Duncan, as we have two of the guards. Afterwards, John and Jasmine didn't see each other again 
as Jasmine had moved to another town because a neighbor had given her death threats and she moved to escape it and Jordan never had time to look for her. A few months later, they would see each other again, but Jasmine had something to tell him. Jasmine? Is it really you? We haven't spoken in months. And you didn't bother looking for me? I didn't know where to find you and I didn't get any time. Being a guard is tiring as it is. Well, darling, I have to tell you something shocking and I won't know how you'll feel. You'll probably not care at all. Just say it for goodness sake. We don't have all day. I'm pregnant with your foal that got conceived a few months ago. Happy now? What? You were with foal? Why couldn't you just have sent me a letter about this? I'm going to have a niece or a nephew. I'm going to be an uncle. I'm going to be an uncle. I'm going to be an uncle. Yes, Hugo. You're getting a niece or a nephew, but they won't arrive for months. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. <sighs> so, do you accept that I'm carrying your foal, or am I to leave and never come back? Yes, I accept it, and we'll get married after the foal is born. In the meantime, we'll get planning and tell Sven and Magnus to come home as soon as they can to help. Meanwhile, as the wedding plans were underway, Sven and Magnus were going to have a surprise as well, while they were in their home country. Why did they have to go so soon from us? I don't know why she had to die from an illness, but we don't know what happened to their wife. She just went to a town called Ponyville and disappeared from the forest they have, and she never returned. It's been so many years, and I fear the worst. I know she's still alive. She's out there somewhere. I can feel it. Sven, we have to move on. She's not coming back, and hasn't been since the day she's disappeared. Don't tell me that! She's still alive! You have to move on, for goodness sake! I have, and I'm trying to find love again. No pony will be like Selina. Uh, look, let's go to Elsa's house to cool off. She'll probably have some coffee for us. That sounds like a really good idea. She was always such a great family member after mum and dad died. It's so great to see you! It's been so long! Magnus and Elmi! So happy to see you guys again. I have some coffee on the table and some cupcakes. Is your job at controlling winter still going good? It sure is. The good thing is, I get a break until winter to make sure no disasters are happening. Elsa? Who are they? Dolly and I can hear you guys from my room. Uh, uh... Are you hiding something? Are they who we think they are? Sven, Magnus, meet your daughters, Elizabeth and Nyla. Sven, Elizabeth is yours, and Magnus, Delia is yours. What? Hey! <laughs> Come on, Dahlia, do the same to your dad. You should be happy that what we aren't orphans. <laughs> I'm not going to hug the dad that hasn't been here for the first seven years of my life. I'd rather stay here than go home with him. Uh... Delia, no matter what, you are going home with him. Your uncle and your cousin, as that's the best thing. Your mom wouldn't like it if you refused to go with him. Elizabeth's would be the same. But you're more of a mom to me than any pony. I'm only upset because my mom and Lanza Elizabeth abandoned us here. Your mom couldn't take care of you because your dad's granddad would have done something horrible to her and you if you found out that you were the daughter of one of his grandsons. He wouldn't have done the same to Elizabeth's mom to and to her. <sighs> it's true. Because Elizabeth's mom couldn't bring a cult into the world as her grandfather would have wanted that. 
but if he found out she had a filly instead, she would have done terrible things. <laughs> now, why don't we spend the night here, then go home in the morning? Yay, we have to go to our home! Yeah, sure, whatever. Bye bye, hope to see you again. I wonder what our home is going to look like. It's a very nice house, and we'll show you something. There we go. You look really beautiful in this. No, 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 darling. This isn't what I wanted. This doesn't suit me at all. Are you really not this good with dresses or picking out dresses? No, I was never into dresses, really. Let me see if any of the dresses I found will suit you. Oh, this looks perfect. Let me get those things off and I'll help you in this dress. This is so exciting. I can't wait to see what the bride will look like. Is there anything we can do while we wait? We 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 got them good. Oh, uh, what was that for? Come on, we were just having some fun. We are trying to do something until the bride walks down the aisle. So are we. While our dads are talking to the groom, we've been sitting here. <clears throat> we should introduce ourselves. My name's Autumn, and this is my cousin Georgina. We live quite a distance from the castle, but it's no problem for us. I'm Adalia. This is Elizabeth, who is my cousin. We started living here two months ago, and we like it here. Last one to the table is about an egg! What are you doing here? I did receive an invitation to this wedding, and Autumn convinced me to go. Well, why couldn't you just have let her go on her own? Or are you too protective of her? Why, I oughta. Kana is out on business to Hoovistralia, and I can't have Autumn be her on her own. She's seven years old for crying out loud, and her birthday is in a month. Why doesn't he just get out of the business and spend more time with her, are you? Why are you not getting cold hooves here, but you did when you were going to marry me? I was young at the time, and I didn't feel ready. We were only going out for a month and not a few years. Yeah, well, I've been hiding something from you the night you spent at my house, the month you proposed to me. What could it possibly be? You see that filly with yellow fur and red hair like mine? Well, <laughs> she's your daughter. I wasn't sure if I was pregnant with her until I checked with the doctor a week after the wedding. I want you to be there for her as your her dad. Jocelyn, I don't have time for this. My new wife, Jasmine, is having a full, and I'm only going to be there for that full and not the one you have. But, but, she's... Don't say anything else. <sighs> you will care about her. I know you will. It's starting, Georgina. Are you excited? <laughs> Mares and gentle goats, we have come here today to celebrate this beautiful wedding. We hope that these two will last for a long time. Jordan, do you take Jasmine to be your wife? I... I... I do. And Jasmine, do you take Jordan? To be your husband. I do. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Mmm, this cake looks delicious. Time to dig in. <laughs> Georgina, a slice of cake belongs to your cousin. It's okay, Aunt Jocelyn. I'm not bothered by you. I'll just Cut this slice in half and give her the one in the half. <laughs> mm. 
Well, 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 Emerald, look who it is. Oh, who could it be? We have three fillies who have no talents at all. Hey, you don't talk about my friends like that. So what? Those with that king are over four years old are deemed the worst ones to us. We got our cutie marks when we were four. Getting our cutie marks was so easy. Huh, <sighs> you're right. We're seven years old, and we haven't been trying to find what our talents could be. I don't care what they say. We're going to find our special talents no matter what it takes. I know. What if we form a club that really guards finding our cutie marks? Georgina can join, as I won't feel her to feel left out. What do you say, Georgina? <laughs> it's settled then. But... What do we call our club? Hmm... How about Cutie Mark Searchers? Oh! Oh! What about Cutie Mark Seekers? Alright, it's settled. We are now the Cutie Mark Seekers. We will seek for a Cutie Mark and keep on doing so until we get them. Once one of us has one, the one that add the cutie mark will be held down. Congratulations, brother, on getting a wife. Thanks, Hugo. I hope you will get one very soon. Choose whomever you like. I won't stop you.